Okay, here's an interesting one. Nintendo is reportedly set to bring Game Boy and Game Boy Color games to Switch Online. Uh, so what do you guys think about that? I think it's a good thing. Uh, I feel like Nintendo's been kind of holding out on the on all these classic games, especially the handheld ones. Yeah. And I think we're all tired of playing uh, the same old NES games or Super Nintendo games. So any new games that they want to introduce to the system, I would be very happy with. Yeah, exactly. What about you? I agree. Um, I've been wanting to play Nintendo 64 games for a while. And emulating them, I don't know. Like, I can do that on my PC, but it's just not the same. Uh, the controls are a little wonky. I like the feel of the Nintendo classic controllers. I'm sure they, if they launched, like, Nintendo 64 classic games on the Switch, then uh, they'd come out with some kind of controller to emulate the C-Stick properly. And uh, the, uh, I think it was called the C-Stick. And the Z-Button and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's something exciting to look forward to. And honestly, for the price point... And the fact that they haven't changed it since launch, really, like other than maybe better battery life, I feel like that's the direction they should go. Just keep adding more retro games. Yeah. Plus, uh, with the uh, their membership, they don't really offer that much. And yeah. It's, it's still exactly. twenty dollars. No, really, there's haven't hasn't been any new updates for it. Uh -huh. And I I keep hearing the online uh, experience is not very good. So, I think that them just giving us that the handheld games would be a great way to kind of start to finally update it and kind of make it compatible you know, comparable to the other ones i mean xbox game pass is very good the even playstation network uh they gave you free games and it, it's just the value even though it's very cheap the value kind of at this point it's not very uh in enticing to people and so i think introducing the Finally introducing Game Boy, Game Boy Color, or even Game Boy Advance games yep. would be would help with that. Yeah, exactly, man. Like freaking, come on. We we pay for Switch. I mean, we don't pay for it, but like when we used to have it, we paid for Switch Online. And just having twenty plus year old games, man, just I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, like the Nintendo classics. Like I thought it would at least be Super Nintendo. And I, I know they came out with a few of them, but originally it was just Nintendo Entertainment System. I'm like, dude, I can do this on my phone. Wait, did you guys have Game Boy Colors or Game Boy Advance? I had, I had a Game Boy Color. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, Game Boy Color. What, what, what games did you guys play on there? I had, I think, one Pokemon game and Tony Hawk. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I didn't have the best experience with it. Uh, so I had the original Game Boy, like the fat one. I had Game Boy Pocket. I had Game Boy Color. I had the Game Boy Advance, so I had a bunch of games for it, dude. I played, uh, I remember playing all the Pokemon games at that point. Oh, wow. Um, I played, uh, I remember playing, like, the, the Dragon Ball Z games, like, uh, what's it called? Oh, like the Legacy of Goku. Yeah, those were yeah. fun. Yeah, I, had, yeah, yeah. I played all three of them. Oh, man. And those were uh, pretty good, and there's obviously, like, the, the classics, like, uh, uh, I'm, I don't know if you guys play, like, Legend of Zelda... Link, uh, Link to the Past or Minish Cap or yeah yeah I missed there, out on that there's a lot of good games on there that people kind of overlooked at that point but I think they're a really good uh, way to kind of reintroduce them to them um, there's just some classic like Golden Sun that people kind of want remakes for but I think it's a good idea I grew up with it I would feel at home if they brought it over uh, but you know, you know how Nintendo is. They're they're kind of uh, they like to keep their games pretty close to themselves and not really, you know, give us any anything and you know, in return. In return, basically. So I say go for it. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, Nintendo is going to be Nintendo. But uh, if we're not going to get like a, a Odyssey, an Odyssey sequel, or um, remakes of classic games that we actually like, like um, like Paper Mario. I heard the new one was a was a bust. Um, it wasn't that great, uh, or it doesn't seem that promising. So, um, if you're going to stick with classics and retros, um, then at least keep bringing them without and like any additional charge on our part. And you know what the funny thing is, if they don't bring them, I mean, there's other like Chinese like what well, we saw today, the Ambernick handhelds. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, there's people there will will sell you these games, and you know people will take advantage of that. If Nintendo doesn't want to give us anything, there's people that will give it to you, either for 
cheaper for free basically so i mean i think uh i think they should really look into it <clears throat> yeah there's a lot of cheap alternatives out there and uh people are going to start to scoop those up instead of nintendo because i mean the only thing nintendo has for it now is just that name brand to be honest yeah yeah that's true that's a good point um all right let me take a look at this next one Ooh, wow okay so the apple watch series 6 is a hundred and forty dollars off today on Amazon so instead of 499 mm. right now it's three oh the, this is a cellular one it's 359 instead of 499 okay so, so um I was wondering what do you guys think like uh because the series 7 or whatever so they're gonna call around it around the corner that's right around the corner so what do you think about buying like a heavily discounted uh, EOL product right before the new one's gonna come out well I mean, do you are there any leaks or rumors as to what the the seven is gonna feature? I think the chassis is gonna be different. Yeah, I heard finally. That too. Yeah. Okay. It, it'll be more square. It won't be rounded like they are right now. Um, at least that's what I've seen. Uh, but to go back on your question, I think you should wait. Uh, they may introduce like crazy new features on the new one, and you can always get even cheaper after they come out because they usually go down in price, either brand new or uh, in the used market so i would wait i mean it's only going to be a few more like what two weeks until the new one comes out so if you waited this long why not why not just wait two more weeks yeah that's true what about you well i'm not an apple guy so but i, I mean like anything that's end of like let's say for oh, example oh like yeah in general yeah for i mean to be honest i just upgraded to the galaxy watch 4 from the active 2 <clears throat> which is similar to i think you said series 5 uh, series six. Right series now. six is getting EOL. Yeah, because the series seven is coming out. already. So, wow. I mean, not EOL. Like it's been a year. Yeah, but it's. A, I mean, their iPhones last for years without. I mean, a, on support. It'll still. It'll still last, but they won't be sold anymore. Yeah, when I say oh, EOL, so like it's not the newest thing. Oh, like no production. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. I see what you mean. Yeah, I mean, I could have stuck with my Galaxy Watch Active Two, which um was two years old. Came out in September twenty nineteen. And then this new Galaxy Watch uh, 4 came out in August of this year, 2021. And it's just more sleeker looking. Um, and I didn't have to upgrade to it. I could have been fine with the other one. This one brings, you know, the new Wear OS and stuff. But, um, I mean, it depends on the price you're trying to pay. I mean, it is a watch. It's not a phone, so... Yeah, so I think you can get away with it yeah. a little bit. Because, you don't. Know, it's not as important as, as your phone, but... Yeah. It's always nice to have the newest thing, but... Yeah, you're not going to notice like a considerable slowdown from the old generation watch to now. I mean, it's a watch. How much scrolling would you be doing on there? <laughs> yeah, that's true. You're not true. loading things onto it. You know, you're not overclocking or running games or yeah. even streaming or anything. It's mostly just a ticker. Um, and like, again, it's supposed to be an extension of your phone. Yeah. So, yeah, I would go for the Series 5. It's not so... If it was like the Series 2 or 3... That's different, but I think Series 5 introduced, like, always on display, right? Uh, yep. Yeah. Series 5, yeah. So yeah dude. I would go for the Series 5 or Series 6, um, to be honest, yeah, because uh, always on display. I think they had a larger display, too, right? The 46, I think? The Series 4 started the 40 and 40 millimeter. Okay. Um, which was an upgrade from the 38 and 42. Mm -hmm. And then the Series 5 had the always on display. Okay. And then the Series 6 has like a brighter always on display and the whole altitude measuring thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not too... I don't get a watch for the sporty features. I mean, it's cool. Like, I track my heart rate every now and then. Maybe my body composition. Um, maybe my sleep, if I feel like wearing my watch to sleep, which I usually don't. But if those things aren't important to you and you're willing to take a, like a dis huge discount... Uh, on an older model yeah it's a watch yeah you know what i feel though i kind of miss like the early iterations of smart watches when they were extensions of the smartphone i feel like now they focus a little too much on like health stuff like i miss when it was just like i don't know just like extensions of the phone yeah like a ticker almost like your notification shade yeah right on exactly your wrist. i remember i remember when i had the the original lg is it g watch yeah, the yeah. first one. First time. It, it, it was basically Google Now on your wa on your watch, 
and you had like all the cards and then you, you could see like um basically just google now you get your like departure times so you got tickets or something um so i do miss that uh, because it was very simple i mean it had really one job only um but i know what you mean like right now they're trying to make it into almost like a medical device yep and it's like and that drives up the price so much and that's why they're so expensive um and a lot of the features now like i remember when, when the first apple watch with the ecg came out and i'm like this is crazy like if you don't have a heart condition you really don't need this it's just an extra feature you're paying for right you're not really using right um so it, it's just a way for them to kind of like oh it's like it's really cool you can check your heart rhythm but it doesn't really mean anything if you're like under the age of like 50 um and have no heart condition yeah uh, but I, I agree with that i also think they should kind of go back to kind of how they were um, but I know that won't really happen if your competitor offers something similar to like Apple. They're gonna copy and and do the same thing. But I think that um, they're trying trying to compete too much with like uh, fitness trackers, like Fitbit and Garmin, um, and those actual ones that uh, that are meant solely for health. Like they're just they don't even have some of them don't even have a display. You just sync on like the the, the stats to your phone. Um, I can't remember the name, but they're supposed to be really accurate because they're, they don't have any operating system or anything. It's just solely a sensor. Yeah. Um, and Samsung, Apple, uh, all these other, uh, uh, LG, I think, I don't know, I don't think they make watches anymore, but when they did, um, Huawei, you know, they're trying too much to compete in the sports activity, fitness space while still maintaining the, the mobile OS um, gig as well and I think they should just focus more on the mobile part and less on the sporty part or the fitness part because end of the day I mean I use my watch as a ticker or notification so I'm getting a call things like that I'm not tracking my sleep every day or like um, how much my blood oxygen level is every day and they even give you a disclaimer like this is not meant to be for uh, medical use like medical purposes Yep, I um, say that. yeah so then what's the point Wait, do, you, do you guys actually use the health features on your watches? Not really. I do it on day one. Like I have an Apple Watch, so I do. I have the Apple Watch SC, uh -huh. so that has everything except for the ECG always on display, and I think it doesn't have the 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 blood oxygen. I can't remember, but I do. I do. I don't check my heart rate like ever it doesn't really mean anything to me mm -hmm. the only thing i do use it for is for running so it'll does track my my miles yeah uh, so that's through the nike app uh, but that works really good on there but and i do track my workouts mostly to to kind of uh, complete my rings i guess but also to see how long i've been working that for oh, but man. other than that man i really don't really use it for anything else like i said i don't have any heart conditions so i don't really care for these yeah things. Um, maybe I think I think they they were saying there might be a leak where their Apple's trying to get into like um, checking your blood sugar. Um, that would be more useful. But again, I, I don't have any health conditions like that. So yeah, um, that's true. But what about you guys? Do you guys use it at all? For me, I just use the workout feature, like for running. Same thing. And then sometimes, not all the time, I'll check like my heart rate, just like out of curiosity. And then, um, apart from that, with the ECG, I mean, technically, like, I shouldn't be doing this because it's actually linked to, like, um, my birthday, my gender, and everything. But, um, because my dad's a heart patient, sometimes I'll let him try out the ECG feature and just, you know, see, uh, how it is for him. But, yeah, apart from that, no, I just use it, like I said, as an extension of my phone. Yeah, for me, um, it's more of like those, uh, a parlor trick or party trick, um, where you just show it off once, like, oh, yeah. hey, look what I can do. Oh, you want to make sure your, um, your EKG is normal, your heart flow, electrical flow through your heart is going normal. Here, use my watch. It's just kind of like that. It's like a one and done kind of thing. Not something I look at every day and look forward to doing like, oh boy, 3 a.m., let me check my EKG or ECG. <laughs> like, um, so yeah, I don't know. It's not, if it wasn't a feature in the watch, and the watch still looked the same, had the same processor, had the same design, same price, uh, latest were like OS, um, and it didn't have EKG, and it didn't have uh, blood oxygen sensor, I'd still get it. 
Yeah. It's not it's not a, a deal breaker to me or for me. Yeah, that's true. I get that. Um, oh, okay. So this is a good one. Uh, so you guys know about the whole like child protection thing that Apple's doing? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know, basically like um, they're making this move with iCloud or iCloud Photos where like they're comparing hashes to that of uh, that compares to child pornography. And then I think they will, I could be wrong about this, but I think they'll like turn it into law enforcement if they see similar hashes. Um, and then a lot of people got mad about that because they think that's a very hypocritical move of Apple since they're always like preaching the whole privacy stuff and everything. And then basically they're kind of reversing that by saying that like, you know, um, we're kind of going to look at your photos now without actually looking at your photos um so this article is actually saying right here that apple is delaying um those controversial child protection features because of what so many people are, are saying about privacy mm, okay yeah. okay i mean the algorithms they have set in place um yeah it's definitely an invasion of privacy <clears throat> even though apple does say that they won't check your data unless it matches, but um, I don't know. I mean, Google said that too in the past. Um, I get that they're doing it for the right reasons or whatever, but I mean, I don't know why go that route instead of just finding another way to do it, I think. I, I, I'm a little like, I'm not too concerned because I don't own an iPhone, so. Yeah, me yeah. neither, because I think it's only through iCloud Photos yeah. And I don't use iCloud Photos. Yeah. Yeah, me either. I used to use Google Photos. Yeah, but... Google Photos is a shit. Yeah. But, you yeah. Know. but I I don't... I understand why people are upset. And I, at the same time, it's like, I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, again, I don't use iCloud Photos. As long as it's just their the, the cloud and not actually, like, on my device, I think I'll feel better. But they... I don't know if they'll ever go and check your device, but... I, I can see why people are upset, but at the same time, I understand why, why Apple is kind of doing it, but I don't know. I feel like, I feel like it's, it kind of goes against what you, like what you guys said, where it kind of goes against what Apple was initially saying, where, um, I, mean, I think there, there were ads out there were saying that, you know, whatever happens on your iPhone stays on stays your Stays on your iPhone, yeah. And, but they're kind of going around, you know, kind of dismissing that now, but yeah. I, I don't know. It's, it's a hard topic. Um, I'm all for, you know, keeping the kids safe, but at the same time, you know, it, it's a, is it a, a, a worthy cause to kind of start to implement all these different, you know, checks on your on your iCloud for now. Yep. Yeah. You know, are they going to start checking their phones? Are going to start checking, you know, your MacBook? It's it's just, I don't know. It, it's, it's kind of a slippery slope, um, but I feel like they should be able to do something else. I'm sure they say that it's it's the most secure way they can do it, or they're they're trying to make it the more secure way that yeah. they can do it. It's but I, at the same time, it's just if they do this, what else are they going to do? You know? Yeah, like what's next? You yeah. know, is your message is going to be looked at, or exactly, yeah. yeah. And if if anything, if you're going to do this and you're going to require that all of your users um, uh, agree to the terms, then the least you could do. Is increase that horrible five gigabyte iCloud uh, free right, storage? Man. Like that's just in this day and age, five gigabytes that's is like not, not even half a month's worth of media storage, whatever. And so, they like what quadruple? Not even quadruple, more than quadruple their base storage for yeah, like so many years. Storage, yeah, so they can do for, it. Uh, the, internal storage for iPhones and stuff. I'm thinking that not enough people use iCloud or buy iCloud, I'm guessing. Um, and that's why they haven't increased the cap. Because I know Apple, you know, is like the king of subsidizing their services um, and charging for them. But five gigabytes, like, 
They need to change that. Yeah, right. I think I think Google does like what 15? fifteen. Yeah, and it's okay. free. Oh yeah, yeah, five gigabytes is free yeah. too. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah that's 15, three times as much. Yeah, but you share with Gmail, you share with Word, Google Drive, or whatever. Yeah, yeah yep, you, everything's shared. Yeah, it integrates well. But you can you can free up space really quick. Like, I know that they're deterring away from this now, but they had that whole unlimited storage thing. Yeah, yeah. Now only Pixel owners get it, and I think only after the Pixel four or five, one of them. I know that the the new one doesn't count the five the six um, that's coming out, which we're going to be talking about too. But that one is does not inc it's not included with the unlimited storage. So you had the option like you know one time I had like twelve gigabytes um, of space used up and I only had three gigabytes or four gigabytes left, um, and I'm like crap like where am I going to put all the rest of my my stuff? So then I found out that if I convert the um, the original quality to just Google Photos high quality, and you know, to the to the eye, the perception is, you know, it's you you can't see the difference. It's imperceivable. So I'm like, yeah, screw it. Let me con convert it to high quality. So it went from being 12 gigabytes used to zero, because high quality doesn't count against you. So yeah, I went from not using original quality to high quality and saving myself 12 gigabytes, and I can't even tell the difference, which is a great thing. But unfortunately, they're getting rid of that. They're still giving you 15 gigabytes. They're just not. Now it's going to be counted against you starting now. So yeah. that's one thing that sucks. I'd still use that over iCloud, though. Oh, yeah, for sure. But I'm sure more uh, companies and um, cloud providers are going to be coming out with more alternatives now that both Google and iCloud are becoming somewhat of a uh, cumbersome option. Yeah. It sucks, but what are you going to do? Um. Oh, okay. So this one, <clears throat> this one's actually interesting because I don't think any streaming stick provider has done this before. But um, Amazon, they're reportedly planning to make their own TV. Not like, uh, you know how they do the partnerships with like Best Buy and they have those Toshiba TVs yeah, and yeah. Signia TVs with Fire TV. No, not like that. This is actually an Amazon branded TV. So this is... I think this one is going to say Amazon on the front. Um, and it says right here, the TVs are going to have Alexa. The Sorry if I triggered anybody's uh, echo. <laughs> um, screen sizes will be in the range of 55 to 75 inches. And it will be designed and manufactured by third parties like TCL. Okay, so they'll still be kind of cheap. Uh... So they're built in? Yeah, yeah, it's like um, in house. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I mean TCL is. It's an Amazon brand, right? No, it's uh, I don't know what they Aren't are. Aren't they, they their were, own thing? I thought they were owned by Amazon. Or something. No, they. I think they worked with Amazon in some previous TVs, but I know they're lower end TVs. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they are. So Samsung makes their panels though. So they're not gonna be like uh, very good TVs, I guess. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe they're. I'm not too excited for it. I guess. I mean. I think we all have a, a Nvidia Shield, so we're kind of taken care of. Yeah. In terms of uh, like smart Streaming TVs, players, yeah. And we, I think we all have Samsung TVs with with what Tizen on there. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it it's not a TV for me. I know it's going to be for someone who's maybe looking for a first time TV, or a little cheap one for school or something. But um, I mean, that's cool. I'm I'm all down for. I, I used to have a Fire Stick TV. Um, and so I know their their products are usually pretty good, um, but that's cool. I guess I was hoping that Apple would come out with a TV or <laughs> or something like that. But yeah, that's true. Um, it says right here that TCL is actually their own company. They're not owned by anybody. They own uh, Alcatel, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I would get that as a secondary option, like for you know, if I'm. If I'm like like Elon Musk and I got a bunch of rooms in the house, or I want to set up a game room in the basement, uh, something like that, um, then I w or maybe like a TV for the bedroom or lay down and just watch TV before you knock out. I would use TCL as a secondary TV, but I wouldn't as good as it may be or cheap as may as it may be or you know loaded with Fire OS. Um, it's just not my primary choice if i'm going to be spending money i'd rather spend a little bit more and get like like he said the nvidia shield um and a samsung tv and pair them together versus just getting a tcl with 
with Amazon's uh, OS baked into it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, oh man, what? Okay, look at this one. Horizon Forbidden West won't have an upgrade path from PS4 to PS5. Uh, oh yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, I guess Sony in initially said that they were they were gonna give you a PS5 a PS5 version of it when it came out to the for the PS4. Uh, so now they're kind of going against that, uh, what they initially said. Is this the sequel? Yeah, the second. Okay. okay. Yeah, it says you'll have to buy the more expensive versions of the game that offer digital copies for both the PS4 and PS5. Or start with PS4 and buy an entirely new PS5 copy of the game later. That's stupid. I think, um, I think right now, I think just because of the whole situation with the... Um, with COVID and how everything's kind of back ordered or just really hard to manufacture at this point, I think they should offer it. Um, it's just so hard to get a PS5 still. I mean, I don't have one. I know you guys do. Um, and it's just if I if I can't go to the store and buy it, I just I mean, it's just so much not harder, but I'm not not as motivated to get it. Um, and I don't really feel like kind of you know have, having to like watch out for it to like drop and I know the new PS5 the heat sink smaller now, so it's like it's such a weird time. I think they should just give them the the upgrade to the PS5 version uh, as as a sign of goodwill, at least until we can finally get a PS5 like a normal you know a normal thing. But um, I say give it to them, not a big deal, you know, but. I'm not a yep. multi-billion dollar corporation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, PS5 is great. Like you said, my wife got it for me as a gift. So virtually I paid nothing for it. Um, but even so, even if I did, like you said, there's not many games for it out, out for it right now. Um, but at the same time, the future is bleak um, with a lot of things in terms of consoles um, and mainly GPUs. Um, some cameras out there. There's a there's a really um, bleak future for the shortage ahead, and there's no end to it. And because of that, I'd rather just take my chances and grab a PS5 now and call it a day, versus having to pay scalping prices or like wait outdoors on Black Friday or wait in front of my computer screen for the clock to strike 12 only to get beaten out by bots. Um, so the PS5, I I'll take it for now. But um, as it pertains to Horizon, I haven't played. I haven't even played the first one. But I did hear that the first one got the PS5 upgrade, right? So um, that yeah. one got the 4K yeah. 60 Ooh. frames. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the 4K yeah. 60 frames treatment. And honestly, I'm so spoiled now by my phone, by my TV, by my PS5, and mainly by my PC with the high refresh rate that I can't play like 30 frames anymore, yeah. unless it's like a really, really old game. But even like Call of Duty, when we play, um, if it's not 60 frames, I'm not doing it. So it's just, yeah. So I couldn't play, I couldn't get myself to play it on 30 frames. So if the new uh, Horizon is going to be locked at 30 for now with no plans to upgrade to PS5, I would probably just wait until they actually have a PS5 version. I'm not in a rush to play Horizon. Like I said, I haven't even played the first one. Yeah. Now, if it was like Spider Man, which I they never they would never do because it's a Sony Entertainment game, um, it's it's made by them by Sony themselves. Um, then yeah, I would I would be appalled at that. I would try try to like boycott and have them push 4K 60. But for games like Horizon or even like The Last of Us, um, eh, I can wait. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, a few minutes ago, you were mentioning uh, GPUs and scalping prices mm -hmm. and uh speaking of which mm -hmm. there are some reports that are coming out of asia now these aren't like a hundred percent accurate these could these are just like considered rumors at this point mm -hmm. but here's one thing nvidia's gpu supply which as you were saying like about the shortages mm -hmm. it can drop about to up drop by about 30 percent wow that's crazy. There's already a shortage. That's insane. And it, yeah. What's so, wait, heck? the supply is going to drop 30%? That's what they're saying, yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. That's insane. 
Oh, man. Because people are already having a hard time finding them now, you know? Yeah. And it was supposed to get better, but I guess, like I just said, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Yep, and guess what? It's not even the 10 series or the 20 series. It's the 30 series. Yeah. That's going to get dropped. Man. That's their main flagship right now. Those are the ones they're trying to push and sell. Yeah. See, if that's the thing. Like, if those are going to be dropped in supply even though the demand is ridiculously high they should be providing more supply and like i know that the shortage started because lack of workers you know during the pandemic because they all depend on that um uh, it's like a abbreviation it's a taiwanese chip making company can't remember the name but um they all rely on them like all the like even apple did at one point um Samsung, Sony, you know, all the GPU, NVIDIA, they all rely on this Taiwanese company. It's like TSMC or something like that. Um, and they actually have workers now getting back into, you know, the grind, the, the pre-pandemic grind. But they just have so much to catch up on that the supply is going to take a long time. They're going to need to overhaul and hire maybe quadruple the amount of workers that they had pre-pandemic. Yeah, you're right. It's up. TSMC. Yeah. So, because of that, um, you would you would think that there's a su- uh, increase in supply, not a decrease, because yeah. there's more workers now and stuff. But I guess there's still, you know, I guess it's just too much to handle for them. You know, they might be overworked, kind of like Amazon's workers, you know, being overworked, exhausted. Um, so yeah, th- this shortage is not going to end anytime soon, and that's exactly why I said um, that pertains to not just GPUs, but the p- the consoles too. Maybe not so much Xbox, but the PS5 for sure. And I'm sure you guys heard about the new PS5, um, just to bring that up for a little bit. Although they did mention that the new PS5 model has no effect on whether the shortage goes up or goes down. Um, it has no effect on it at all. It's just offering a new variant of the console, kind of like COVID's new COVID, variant. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what do you guys think of the, um, I think a few features is you know, the, the heat sink is smaller. And it's like 300 grams lighter. Um, what do you guys think? Um, do you think if you were in the market for a PS5, you're getting the original uh, launch one or this new version? Um, whichever keeps the CPU cooler, CPU, GPU. Yeah. So yeah. That... I know. I know. Austin Evans came out with a video, mm-hmm. and I know everyone like on Reddit and stuff are saying he's very uh, unscientific because he was. Measuring Testing it without, he was he was measuring the 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 exhaust, the the hot air. Yeah. And he was saying it was hotter, but if it's hotter, does it mean it's it's cooling better mm-hmm. compared to the old one? I don't know. And really, I don't think anyone has that ability to check Mm-mm. unless you're Sony. Hot? So I mean, as long as uh, the, the it's keeping it cooler, that's the only thing that really matters. But it, we don't know if it's a smaller heatsink. Um, it's it, taller, but it's not as many fins, I guess. Yeah, so the fins are what dissipate the heat. But, um, I mean, yeah, like you said, someone needs to put it to the test. But if it is a smaller heat sink and it's lighter, um, it probably won't be at running as cool as the original. But I think the main um, like incentive that Sony had for this new version is to make it lighter. Because apparently a lot of people are complaining that it's too heavy. But it's like, it's a console. Yeah, it's you're not gonna, you're not gonna yeah. carry it around. It's not yeah, a yeah. switch. It's not a phone. It's not a tablet. It's not a laptop. You know, it's not your dog. Uh, you're not carrying it anywhere. Yeah. So why does that matter? I, I don't get it. I know. Yeah. And for me, I think like to answer your question about um, whether I would get the new version of the PS5 or not, I think I'd be good with the one that I have as long as the uh, M.2 feature comes out soon. Like, it comes out of beta, and finally it's on the official release, then yeah, I, slapping an M.2 on there, uh, having a heat sink, that would be good enough. I wouldn't get a different iteration of the PS5. Yeah, I would get the the LG one, too, just just because I know it, it works, and then, I mean, who knows what the new one is going to be like. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think that... Um, Looking forward, I'm I'm probably gonna wait till there's a new redesign for me to get it, just so I can um, 
get that. I usually I usually never get launch mm-hmm. consoles. I always get the redesign after like what two three years. See, for me and Austin, we never got a console at launch. Uh, it's always been I got the Nintendo sixty four uh, two months after it came out, which is I guess not really a launch, but near yeah. the initial release. That was when I was a kid in the nineties. Uh, my dad got it for me, but. Um, the the entire life of place. I didn't have the PS One. Got the PS Two two years after its launch. We didn't get them at launch. But the funny thing is, we always had the OG versions of each like, huh. one. <laughs> yeah, yep. The PS Three came out two thousand six. We got it two thousand nine, and and it was uh, three years after, and we got it on eBay used. Yeah. And it had it suffered from the yellow light of death, and we eventually got the slim after that. And then the PS Four we got two years after it came out. Um. And then we eventually got the PS4 Pro. And then now, first time ever, is the one we got at launch. But the PS5 is like, there's a, there's like virtually nothing wrong with it. There's no like hiccups or any like um, issues that I'm seeing that like, that are causing me to say like, you know what, I should have waited. You know, like they've gotten it because nowadays they're basing it off of like PC infrastructure. And um, it's gotten so good in terms of loading speeds, P- CPU speed quietness you know like cooling everything is down to a t the only thing that's that's causing it to like uh like might be a little bit of a setback is that it's a bulky console and people want theirs a little slim maybe they don't have room for me personally i have an entertainment center and my ps4 pros fit there and i have this little corner and uh my subwoofer fit there but the ps5 just won't yeah. and I have to, i'm forced to put it on top so yeah. that maybe that's one small caveat but again, it's more of an aesthetic thing. Uh, it's not a performance thing, so it doesn't bother me. The PS5, the I mean, the one I'm running right now, I, I played Miles Morales on it. I platinumed it. I played multiple other games. Not a hiccup at all. Didn't heat up at all. Um, it, it's running just fine. So, yeah, the only incentive I would have to get another um, uh, iteration of it is if it's slimmer, I guess. Yeah. Maybe. Even then, like, it has this plate, those plates... And they're interchangeable. I mean, PlayStation never had that. So you can get some off, like, um, not trying to sponsor, where you can get some off dbrand. Um, and they're really nice. They're like the black versions. Because, you know, this is the first, like, white PS PlayStation console um, at launch. And, you know, if you don't like it, you can swap them out. You know, they're, they're detachable, and you can put on new ones. So I like that Sony's letting you do that. And as long as they have that kind of customization, I, I'm not really looking forward to any new models. Unless they introduce some kind of new tech like two terabytes built in or something oh so something that's like exclusive to that one yeah like if they came out with a oh playstation 5 uh x6 something some kind of weird number and it and said oh includes two terabyte internal ssd plus uh overclocked cpu and like a pro like a yeah like a pro model yeah like a ps5 pro (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. because i really don't know what the hell they're gonna do to make the PS5 more pro than it already is. I know, is. like 8K gaming? Yeah, like, like the what? PS4, <laughs> it did 4K, but not very well. Uh, and it was very, very limited. Uh, then the PS4 Pro came, and it gave you graphical options. Like, oh, you could choose performance, you can choose uh, quality. And even that was kind of like, you know, it was still a, a, a jet, like, you know, in the back. Like, it was really loud. But the PS5, it gives you, like, performance mode, quality mode, uh, ray tracing mode with performance, ray tracing mode with quality, so many options and none of them, you know, make your PS5 like a, an engine, you know, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what they're going to do to make it a pro. I know it's coming for sure in a few years, but I have no idea what they're going to do. Maybe introduce like some kind of new VR chip or something. I don't know. No idea what they're going to do. Oh yeah, I forgot about the PlayStation VR. Yeah, Yeah. they should have added a new one for that. That's a pro they haven't come up with a new one yet. Yeah, right? You'd think they would. Yeah, because uh, I know the, the PS5 supports it. But uh, who knows? Yeah, no, that's it's all crazy. I don't know where they're going to go from there. Um, oh, man, look at this one. Okay. Twitter finally launched on... Did you guys hear about the whole Super Follows thing mm-hmm. on Twitter? You know what you pay? Yeah, you pay to like get like exclusive like tweets and all that stuff. Oh, um, exclusive so they, tweets. Yeah, for like premium tweets, um, they charge from two ninety nine to four ninety nine or nine ninety nine. 
and uh, it finally launched on iOS. What is it called? Only tweets. <laughs> uh, I don't get it. Man. Do, do they do they do they add you with these tweets? I, I, I don't understand. Well, what um, some people are thinking, and this is what I originally thought too, is that now uh, how OnlyFans they're kind of ditching what a lot of people use it for mm -hmm. um they're gonna shift over to super follows and make subscriber only content oh okay so that's kind of like what uh, those patriot accounts or whatever patreon yeah patreon yeah, patreon. yeah. yeah. i don't know it's, i think it's stupid uh, i mean i don't think people use twitter for that yeah. And it, it's been free for so long. Why would you start paying for tweets? Yeah. You know, See, like, that's a funny thing, though. Like, you would think that. Because that's how I think, too. Like, who, who the heck would pay for tweets? I just... I use Twitter for free. I just saw, like, a tweet the other day. It was, like, a funny meme. And then someone said, this app really is free. <laughs> um, you think it would be stupid. But then, eventually, people, they jump on the wagon. Like, yeah. um... OnlyFans, they said that about OnlyFans too when that first came out. Like, the content that's on there, <laughs> they would say that you could, you know, look that up for free. But then slowly, uh, people would just shift over to OnlyFans. And even like um, Snapchat, I remember when did it come out? Like 2012, 2013? Like yeah, eight, nine there. years ago? Yeah. I remember when that first came out. Both of you guys, and I think yeah. maybe I said it too, were like, this is so stupid. Mm -hmm. Like, just send These, each other videos. For 24 for hours, and then they expire. That's yeah. so dumb. And now look how big it is. Yep. So, yep. Um, Everyone's going the story route. Yeah, Snapchat honestly took off. I'm going to tell you, it's only because of their filters. Yeah. The filters is filters. what made it, like, yeah. That's cool. That stupid dog filter and all that stuff. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean... I don't know. I, I don't. I'm not. I don't follow Twitter. I don't. I'm, I have a Twitter account. I made one like 11 years ago, but I, I, I don't like Twitter. I don't like using Twitter. So um, to get exclusive tweets for a premium price, I don't know. That's just that's just doing too much. That's too extra for me. Yeah, it's not really for me. I mean, I'm sure people would pay for it. I don't see myself paying for it. I can see people who are in the, like in the stock market, like brokers or investors. You know, they pay attention to tweets to see, you know, to buy, sell, you know, trade, things like that, uh, of that nature. Maybe those would, um, you know, tend more uh, attractive to them or, you know, appeal more to them. Uh, but, yeah, for someone like me who I just get my news off my Google News Feed or to, through TikTok or... You know, just through word of mouth. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really rely on Twitter. Oh, just, so you're saying about, like, good stock predictions and things like that? Yeah, that yeah. Could... Like, like Trump, for example. Anything Trump or Elon Musk tweet, it literally shifts the, the stock market. And where do they... I mean, it's mostly on Twitter. They don't really use face, Facebook or Instagram at all. It's, Damn, it's mostly that kind Twitter. Of yeah, that kind of worries me then because... Yeah, they That's might certain, have first primary access. Yeah, well, not only access. yeah, and I'm thinking about one certain account that we follow for. I won't say what their name is, but that we follow for video game deals. Yeah, and yeah. What if oh, they man. make theirs? You know, That's super true. follows only. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I hope that doesn't happen. I mean, like, if it does, I'm. Oh well, I'm not paying for it because I'm not gonna pay. For a, a chance to get a deal, because that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. These uh, video game like um, ads or like leaks, or like oh, uh, twelve o'clock tomorrow, this game's gonna be ten dollars instead of fifty. Uh, you have to act fast, but they're not. You're not guaranteed to get it. Right. It's still a chance. Yeah. It's so just and a right now it's free. It's free handout, free advice, uh, information for you to have an opportunity to get something. It's not guaranteed. Now you're telling me I gotta pay to have a chance to get something, and still it's still not guaranteed. No. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, don't, I, I really hope they don't go that route. Um, oh, you were saying earlier that we're gonna talk about Pixel later. I was just so, that up. Yep. Yeah. So look at this. Google reportedly is they're optimistic about Pixel Six sales. I mean, why wouldn't they be? They're not oh, gonna yeah. be like, oh yeah, we're not gonna do good on the <laughs> Pixel Six. Yeah. Um, so they increased production by 50% for the Pixel 6. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 
You know, I'm glad to hear that because my biggest worry was that there's going to be a shortage. Because this year, man, honestly, I haven't been impressed with the Pixel since the... I mean, I have, but like not so much that I got to jump on and get the newest one, the latest one, since the Pixel 3. The Pixel 3 was a beautiful slab of aluminum glass sandwiched together with a horrible bathtub notch. But if you ignore <laughs> the notch, it was a beautiful phone. It was the first to to um, introduce I, full IP68 water resistance, uh, wireless charging, it had wireless charging fully, um, and it had like a better resolution, a much amazing speakers, a beautiful camera. It was a huge step up from the Pixel 1 and Pixel 2. Um, I didn't get that same feel with the Pixel 4. It just felt like more, more of the same with the Pixel 3 but with a, a better body, no ugly chin. Yeah, I like the chin and the forehead on the yeah. Pixel 4. Yeah, yeah, no ugly chin and forehead. Um, and it, it didn't have a fingerprint thing. So when the, the pandemic happened, oh man, going to Costco runs and like needing to unlock my phone, I had to take off my mask every Dude, time. Yep, and like, same. why it's wouldn't horrible. you introduce that? You know, like, and like, you know, we were trying not to touch things. So I didn't want to use a passcode either. Right. So that was Pixel 4. You fast forward to the Pixel 4a series, which came out last August. Those were great. Those were great budget phones. Um, for someone like you, Leo, who's in the iPhone space, Apple space, and you're running to get a, into Android, I would start with the Pixel 4a like budget. Because if you're not trying to spend a lot and you want to get a good experience, 4a, 4a 5G, and this new 5a are great places to start. Um, and even those, like you know, those were they were still old designs with the fingerprint embedded on the back. Um, and then that similar candy bar look. Um, but this new one, the Pixel 6, it's just different. Um, and Samsung is behind the scenes of a lot of it. You know, like the the camera module And the chip. The chip, mainly. Uh, the screen. The only thing they're not making is probably the body, and that's probably HTC. Um, but with Samsung and Pix uh, Google working together and having their baby, man... We've wanted that. Android users have wanted that since what? What's it called? The Nexus, the first Nexus. Or no, Galaxy even the Nexus. the GPE. Remember Google Play Edition? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back yeah. then, like 2012 days, like when the I remember Galaxy Nexus was a thing. That's when Google uh, worked with Samsung to create. Yeah. yeah, that was one hell of a phone, and that was back then. And then after that, um, Google tried LG. They tried uh, HTC, a couple other ones, Huawei. And yeah. Huawei, and like I don't know. Yeah, the 6P was great with Huawei, but. I don't know, now, like, I'm like, why not get the best of the best? If you want to take down Apple or at least be, like, a, on par with them or, like, keep up with them, you got to team up with your two best, and that's Google and Samsung. So I'm really, really, really excited. The only thing that's pissing me off is I keep hearing these rumors, like, oh, it's coming out September 13th. Then I hear September 30th. Now I'm hearing October 19th to 28th. Yeah, like, it's that's so in That's really the pissing air. me off. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I have my money ready i'm gonna get it from best buy and now that best buy does the t-mobile discounts activating over t-mobile um they'll probably knock off another 200 plus i can tr sell my galaxy s21 ultra and pay the difference i don't care i'm ready to buy it but i need to know when it comes out because i'm ordering that the same night yeah i'm not gonna wait because of the the shortage i'm too scared the yeah. only thing is i don't know what color i'm gonna get i was just gonna ask that what color i don't know what color, color i'm gonna get but what color are there Oh, there's a lot. It's like orange and... and that was the, the smaller ones are the more colors. Yeah, there's different colors. Yeah. I don't know about more, but there there's some exclusive colors to the smaller one. Yeah. I, the, the smaller one has the better colors, I think. I remember it was like a lot more... Um, Options? Like punchy colors on the small one, and then the bigger one was more like your typical white and black and I think gray or something. But... Yeah, the Pixel 6 Pro is going to have... Um, a black version, a, a silver one, and a gold one. Oh, gold. Yeah, all black, sand, and gold. That's what they're calling it. Okay. Okay. I heard something about a bald gray or something. Bald, bald something. It's it's called um, not sure what the name is. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have the name, or I I can't find the name, but yeah. Yeah, the colors are interesting, but the more more important part is that. I don't know if you guys know this, but <laughs> Pixel has been using the same camera sensor since the Pixel 2, yep. since 2017. They've all just been uh, machine learning enhanced or AI enhanced. They have not been reintroduced as physically new modules, camera modules. And that's kind of like 
that's impressive because Pixel's been able to keep up with the big dogs like um, a- um, Apple. Yeah, they've Huawei. always been top three. Yeah, Apple, Huawei, and uh, Samsung. Well, let's even take Huawei out of the equation because they're not in the U.S. market really. So Apple and Samsung, and then Google is either second or third place or even first place sometimes. And that's been used uh, by using the same cameras they've had since 2017, four years. So now they're reintroducing like that 50 megapixel one. I think it's either a Sony or Samsung one. Um, and then two other modules. And then they're flushing it in the back. Um, and it looks really nice and robotic. Kind of reminds me of the 6P, like 6P vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the back. Like the visor looking. Yeah. Camera. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like Robocop looking. So I like that. And on top of that, they're going to have machine learning plus their own tensor core it's just uh, there's no way i'm not going to try that there is absolutely no way i'm not going to try that and with samsung you know behind the scenes it's it's guaranteed to be good it's not lg you know like i mean they're a good company i guess but not for phones obviously so i'm hyped for the pixel 6 the only thing left to decide other than the color is um that uh that price I don't know what what price do you guys think they'll market at. A thousand. I'm hoping it's less than uh, eleven hundred. Eight forty nine. I'm kind of feeling. With the smaller one. Oh, the smaller one. No, I'm asking for both. Oh, uh, yeah, I think the, yeah, I agree. Eight eight ninety nine and nine ninety nine. I think that's gonna be the pricing. <sighs> I think uh, it'd be more like the iPhone. Uh, it'd be like what seven ninety nine, and then like. And then nine ninety nine or yeah yeah or how much is the uh, the twelve pro? Is it eight ninety nine right? I think it's um. It's almost a thousand, or either a thousand or a little bit above a thousand. But I know that the iPhone twelve, the regular one, is like seven ninety nine. Now but Apple makes their own chip, right? The A twelve or A fourteen. A fourteen, yeah. Um, okay, so I was, 15, I, guess. I was gonna say because maybe if they in, if they put their M1 in their phones, then they would have been cheaper, and but they have been putting their own even though it's not an M1, the A14 is still theirs. I was gonna I brought that up because I thought maybe since Google doesn't have to pay Qualcomm um, for their chips and they're making making them in house now, maybe that'll you know ma- allow a little bit of flexibility in the price. Oh, they do that, and I yeah. would definitely get one too. I mean, I thought that's the whole point. That's why people get excited. Like, yeah, the number one thing is optimization. If they're making the chip, then it's going to be guaranteed to work with their software because it's they're making both the chip and the software, just like Apple, and it's going to work seamlessly together. But another huge uh, benefit to that is the price. They can yeah, know, so, fluctuate, not fluctuate, adjust the price a little bit. Yeah, so what I think they're doing is... Like, with the whole, um, you know, making their own chip thing that Apple has been doing and Google is now starting to do, because I think they're also going to put in their Chromebook lineup in, like, Mm -hmm. a few years. Mm -hmm. Um, My guess is that they're not doing it so that they can allow for the products to be cheaper. I think they're doing it so that they could allow the products to be the same price without sacrificing any features, like any ports or any chargers that come with the box or something like that yeah i, I know because uh the, the when the app when macbook switched over to the m1 from intel um the price was not lowered it was the same but it was a better bang for your buck but i don't think that google will do <clears throat> go and make them cheaper um I wish they could. I mean, they're, they're a multi-billion dollar corporation. I'm sure they could afford losing a hundred dollars on each phone or something. But I also don't see them, you know, discounting them that much. They're maybe, actually, maybe like, maybe like in a few months after they release, maybe they'll discount them. Like, you know, if you buy them through Google, what Google Fi or something. Mm-hmm. But I don't think they're gonna make them real cheap. I wish they could, man. If if the the biggest one was like what eight hundred bucks, I might I might jump on that, but I don't I don't think so. I don't know. Actually, Google's a trillion dollar corporation oh, now. Sorry, that's but, crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure they are, but they're also. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you you don't get to be a trillion trillion dollar corporation by giving stuff for cheaper. Yeah, but I mean, look at the M1. As good as the price point was in the beginning, it launched at nine ninety nine. 
and even at launch, students got $100 off, making it $8.99. And I don't know if you guys know this, and uh, I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to cause a disruption to this glitch, if it is a glitch, um, or if Apple just hasn't looked into it. But they don't really verify if you're a student. You can just say you're a student, they give you $100 off, only through Apple. Um, if you go to Best Buy or something, they're going to have to have you show some kind of proof. But even then, it's it's fairly easy to show proof. Even if you were, if you were a student in the past, they don't check dates or anything. Just show proof that you were a student once, and bam, free $100 off. So... Because of that, it was it was made eight ninety nine for the base Apple MacBook M one Air, um, and now it's I've seen it as low as seven fifty seven ninety nine yeah um, at discount sale prices. Now we got Black Friday coming up. This thing hasn't even been out a year yet. Mm -hmm. So compared to Apple uh, to Apple to, yeah not just MacBooks compared to Apple products in general in the past, it's never dropped this low in less than a twelve month period. So. Maybe that means that they're okay with dropping the price a little because that M1 didn't cost them anything. Yeah. So maybe they're okay with like, oh yeah, we can knock off 200 bucks as long as we sell 200 more and bring in, break in that extra revenue. So similarly, I hope Google does the same thing and realizes, oh, okay, yeah, let's do a deal on this and let's not make it too much or let's uh, provide offer incentive, like you said, for Google Fi users or uh, bigger trade-in values just to get their first batch of Pixel 6 um, units out the door and uh, for the public to be using them and seeing, you know, because you can have all these events and, uh, and like shows and saying like, oh, this does this and this is this and look at this amazing picture until the user has it in their hand and they're using it and you have to have a real life user's um, perspective and review of the Pixel 6 until we get that, uh, we're not going to know if it's actually what we're hoping it is. But, I mean, Google hasn't had a great track record um, thus far, except for the camera and the amazing software. But the hardware has always bogged it down. It's always been limited, you know. Apps crashing, apps not loading, overheating, random, like, um, reboots. So if all that gets fixed with this, this Tensor chip... Um, and I'm hoping it does. I think they're saying the performance is somewhere between the Snapdragon 888 and the new um, 890 or whatever the hell it's going to be called next year. Whatever non 900 number it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they've been stuck on 800 for a while, even though they're they're creeping up, creeping up there. But um, yeah, if if they if they can at least match, no, you know what? Even if they can at least match an overclocked Snapdragon 888, I'm fine with that, dude. I am fine with that for. Two years. That would be great. I'm fine with it. How many gigs does it have? The RAM? Uh, the Pixel? Yeah. I think the 6 regular has 8, and the Pro has 12. Damn. Yeah. And that's another thing Google does that no one other... Actually, now other manufacturers are doing it because Google was doing it. Google's like the king of this. They don't care if their shit gets leaked. Yeah. They want it to get leaked. It's a smart marketing strategy because people are like, oh, whoa, this yeah, just got leaked. Yeah, it's press. Yeah, it's, yeah basically. And I was like, okay, okay, I might just wait for this instead of waiting for Samsung or Apple. Oh, wow, this looks good. This looks promising. Yeah, I'll just wait out for this. No one goes to these damn shows. You know, like, they're spending money on these uh, displays and this lighting and presentations and AC and all this stuff, beverages and, all, you know, what have you. So instead of doing all that, just leak the damn thing. And when you get the leaks, people will be like, you'll, you'll um, grab their interest with the leaks and you'll lock them in at the actual event. And then you'll sell them at the launch. That's how you should do it. So Google is smart at doing that. They, they don't care if their stuff gets leaked because they know, like you said, it's free press, good marketing, and people will be interested just because it's Google. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I, I hope it all uh, turns out well. Okay, um, so for this last article uh, right here, Microsoft, they're kicking out um, unsupported PCs from Windows 11 testing, and they also confirmed that Android apps won't be available on launch for Windows 11. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Um, the whole Windows 11 thing, I don't know. Like, I'm not a, like a mobile Windows user, so I don't care too much about their apps. But um, 
as a as like a full full fledged like Windows user for the past twenty years or so. Um, yeah, that the whole Windows Eleven thing just seems like a a, a shit show to me. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I've been hearing that it's really just Windows Ten, but with a new skin. Like I understand that they're trying to make it more modernized, like having all the PCs have a, a more um, secure hardware and more up to date on hardware. But I think it's kind of a, I think it's like a mistake on their part. Like, why yeah. would you intentionally, you know, corner off a, a big, a large part of your your customers and your members? Um, from updating to the newest Windows 11. I think it's crazy. I, I think they should really just go back on it and just kind of make it like how it used to be. You know, you want to get it, you can get it. It doesn't matter what you have. Uh, I mean, I have a PC, has a Intel i5, uh, Ivy, no, is it Ivy Bridge or something like that? Really old. It's an i5 40. 760 or something like oh, that. Oh, fourth gen. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's pretty it's pretty old, but I mean, damn, it it, it runs everything I wanted. Yeah. To. But it, I think it's just a horrible thing. I mean, you it's hard to buy a computer, buy anything right now. Why would you Why would you want to have your customers go out and try to buy a new computer in this you know pandemic? Uh, I think they're, they're, it's a mistake. I hope they kind of change their mind on that, but who knows. Yeah, no, I get what you mean. Um, the one thing I don't like about it, though, uh, is the whole, uh, what is it called? Oh, for the Android apps. They use the Amazon App Store instead of the Play Store. It's like, why couldn't they just do the Play Store? I don't know, Google, man. They're greedy as hell. As long as you can do, like, APKs, like you could in regular Android, I think that should be fine, but I don't know. Wait, who was saying this? Windows 11. It, the Android apps, which everybody was so hyped for, it's going to be powered through the Amazon App Store. It's not powered through the Play Store. Oh. So you're not going to have the Play Store on the um, Windows 11 operating system. Yeah, yeah. People were hoping for a hybrid or hybrid or tribrid. Um, I don't know, like... Windows 11, like I think, what, did they? I heard they dropped that whole um, TPM 2.0 requirement. It they was did? some requirement, yeah. They they got it's lenient a on some requirement. Requir That's like a token security thing, like yeah. Like most computers won't have that unless like like Lenovo ThinkPads will have it. Like work work computers, work computers will have it. Like Lenovo thinks link yeah Lenovo ThinkPads, but majority of computers won't have it. Laptops won't have it. So it's like, why is that? Like, what's so good about Windows 11 that you're requiring all of this craziness and not having seventh gen or older Intel processors being supported? Like, what is it doing in the background that's so enhanced? And if it is, then it better like perform really, really well. Windows 10 is fine for me. I I don't think there's anything new that will that requires you to have all this new hardware. I mean. Uh, yeah, you still have Windows 10, but they're, I mean, what, they said until 2025 they'll mm -hmm. support it, and that's not a long time. I mean, it's only four years from now. Are you still going to be using, like, an out-of-date version of Windows? Sure. It's kind of stupid, uh, but I know they, they said that you can um, upgrade using, the uh, like, a USB drive and, I, and, and the ISO, but they said that you can't... Uh, you won't receive the updates like you normally would. You would have to every time there's a new update with security, you know, patches or whatever. You'll have to do the same thing again. Get the ISO, do it again, and it's just it's so stupid. Like it's crazy, and it's weird because our phones don't even do that. Our phones usually just get the newest update. You're gonna get every single update after that yeah either in and with computers they last way longer than our phones uh it's just su such a weird uh backwards way of thinking on their part but you know i still think they should at least extend windows 10 support and definitely at least gives an option to at least install it but we still receive the 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 you know the updates for Windows 11, not just say, "Well, 
you want it here here go and every new update just go and do it again 10 times a year it's just stupid yeah and why now of all times like yeah it's such a bad <laughs> You can't even get a GPU right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just mentioned the whole thirty percent thing. <laughs> Imagine thirty million people saying, "Okay, let me go buy a new computer now," and then every Intel CPU, AMD, Ryzen three, everything just going out of stock because everyone has to buy a new computer or every laptop. And it's crazy because a lot of their their recently released, even like the the Surface Go, which was released two years ago, won't run it. Uh, a lot of their products don't won't run it, and it's just it's just crazy. Like they they they're even abandoning their own products so we can uh, buy a new one. Yeah, like if it was like Mac, and I prefer Windows over Mac any day, but Mac like you know Mojave. What's the latest one that's coming out? Um, I forgot what it's called. Monterey. Yeah. yeah. So um, all these like Mac OS uh, updates like for the past ten years or so, your machine like will more than likely no matter how old it is still receive it you know as long as it's been made like 2011 2012 or newer um i think the 2012 was still getting up to mojave is it the 2012 2012 macbooks um, no those are discontinued so yeah. they're they're not they're they're not i supported? think support no. ended in yeah mojave or i forgot what it was. it was it was uh the one before this current one um uh no, catalina high sierra? i think it was high sierra catalina the latin yeah last os is catalina yeah but that was i mean that's a that's a laptop and it was pretty old at that time uh you could still you could still like side load that the new uh the new updates it'll still run fine but they did end support for 2012. okay so then how about for like the last mac um mac pro not this current one but since they didn't do a refresh for years, does the old one still get the latest updates? Yeah. <coughs> okay, so, okay, similarly, like, that. okay, that's a good example then. If that Mac Pro is getting the latest update now, having old-ass hardware from, like, what, whatever, eight years ago or whatever it was, then, then Windows machines from 2012 should be able to run Windows 11. Yeah. Yeah, maybe they'll say, oh, you must upgrade the RAM. That's fine. Upgrade the RAM to like, you know, even if it's running DDR3 RAM, it must have eight gigabytes of RAM. Don't even say the like the version or the speed. Don't say DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. Just DDR3, DDR4, ignore that. Just say must have eight gigabytes of RAM. If you have a f computer from 2012 and it's running four gigs, of, four gigs of RAM, go out and find another stick and make it eight and be able to run Windows 11 with just that. Because they're... It's mostly under the hood changes and like I think they change the icons, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. So mostly like more flush, minimal icons. Uh, it's not really anything so drastic like a complete a start makeover. menus in the middle. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's yeah. all cosmetic. It's not. It's not really anything under the hood. Everyone says the same as Windows Ten. Yeah. So that doesn't make sense. But I do I, like the new the way the new windows look like though, like the actual app windows. So they have like the. Uh, rounded corners. Yeah, it looks way nicer. Uh, yeah, I'll give it that. Cool. I think like if you have a, a if you build your own PC, it's so much harder to justify buying all those parts again, just for oh, an yeah. update. Yeah. If it's like an old laptop, like a like a crappy one from like Walmart, that you get for a hundred dollars. Yeah, okay, I understand. It's not going to run it very well. We we know that it's a cheap laptop. But if it's a PC, you spend literally thousands of dollars. You're gonna to have to replace some of that, you know, the CPU, definitely CPU, the motherboard, you know, maybe the RAM. If if you have a DDR3, you probably won't get get another motherboard that supports it. Uh, it's just yeah. like it's so it's so it's it's just an annoying thing. You have to kind of change your whole PC again just because you want to run the newest update. It's it's that's the that's the the part that kind of gets to me. Uh, I understand if it's an old device that just can't run it anymore, it's too old, but if you spend all that money and effort ma making your own PC, it's kind of stupid. Yeah, I would have to change my whole motherboard just to get that new TPM. And you have a r relatively very nice CPU, you have mm -hmm. an i7 what? 8700. Is it like 6 cores? It's 6 cores, 12 threads, that shit, unlocked, dude, overclocked. That, that shit will run anything. Mm -hmm. Plus 3080, plus 64 gigs of RAM. Yeah. 
and you're telling me I can't run Windows 11? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, in, it's insane, and it's, it's, it's crazy. It's just a crazy situation. I'm hoping they change it, but, I mean, who knows? This I mean, if they sense. want sales, then, I mean, even for businesses, forget consumers. Like, businesses are their major, uh, like, selling, selling points um, for their software, like Windows. Like, they're bought in bulk by, by hundreds of corporations and businesses alike that need them. And if they can't run the machines on Win uh, Windows 11 on the machines, they're not going to buy Windows 11. Yeah, I just got, like, after two years, I finally, at work, I finally got a new computer. We were using Windows 7, and they recently started to implement Windows 10. Mm -hmm. So I finally got a new computer that has Windows 10, and now we're gonna, and they're going to end support in 2025. And and they're fine and it's it's crazy. Like they just finally gave us Windows ten, but now they're gonna have to get in all new computers to try to get Windows eleven. As a business, it's like that's crazy. Yeah. It's a huge investment you're doing. Yeah. And we work in healthcare, so it's it's it has to be like very secure and I couldn't see that you know, with Windows eleven, but Yeah. I mean we'll see what happens. Uh if Microsoft wants to keep up with Apple I feel like everybody's always competing with Apple, but um, if Microsoft wants to keep up with Mac OS, and honestly, Windows is the OG. Mo majority of people use Windows still. You're going to ruin that trend and that legacy by going this crazy route that you're thinking of going, and then everyone's going to want to jump onto Mac OS or just stay on Windows 10. Or even Linux with a Steam Deck. You know, yeah. I think Linux would be a very good option for people. Yeah. Uh, and I think the Steam Deck's going to help kind of Help, help introduce a lot of people to Linux. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's an open operating system, so... I mean, everything is... Android is Linux-based. Uh, I think Apple... Um, iOS is, too. Um, Mac OS. You can yeah. tell. You can tell that they have those elements. The only one that's not really Linux-based is Windows, which made it so special. So now that Windows 11 is going this route, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm hoping for the best. I've been waiting for a new Windows iteration because they've just been having new builds. I think the latest is like 2004, the number 2004. Um, but those are just security updates, small things here and there. I think they implemented dark mode a few uh, updates ago, a few years ago uh, for Windows. But I mean, there's not, I think Windows 10 looks just perfectly fine. But that's what I'm saying. Windows 11 has to be more than just an aesthetic change. Mm -hmm. it, it needs to incorporate something like out of max um, pages, like how they have that sidecar support, for example, like yeah. Windows. If you have a Surface, you should be able to do like a sidecar, quote unquote, yeah, um, with Windows 11. Yeah. Oh, sorry, you can't do it on Windows 10. You need Windows 11. That's gonna make people want it. Yeah. Then be like, oh, I can't afford another monitor. Oh, but I have a Surface. Can I use that? Yeah. If you have Windows 11. Oh yeah, sure. I'll get Windows 11 then. Okay, done. They need something like that to sell. Yeah, because right now it just feels like a Windows 10s. Yeah, exactly. I don't care about. Yeah, ten years ago in high school, I cared about uh, under the hood changes. When Windows Vista came out, I'm like, damn, this looks so dope compared to Windows XP. And then when Windows 7 came out, even better, the theme changes and stuff. And then obviously, Windows. By the time Windows 10 came out, I was already old enough to not care too much about customization, care more about support and stability. And I'm still on that same page. Um, more than looks, I, I care more about um, performance and optimization and stuff like that for Windows 11. When it comes to looks, I care more about Android. Like Android 12, oh man, that looks complete makeover from Android 11. But Windows 11 is not a complete makeover and it's not really adding new changes at the same time, but demanding so much more. Yeah, it just, it, I don't know, it doesn't make sense, but um, one thing that I would want is like, one good trade-off would be is if they can give us Windows 11 without requirements, then at least we could give them the spoon. 